Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So recently I made a two-part video where I showed how to model this fan step-by-step -step in Blender and it was pretty successful but a lot of people have been asking me can I actually do a part three where I show how to animate the fan. So that's what we're going to be doing in this part. So if you haven't seen the first two parts do check out the description below. I do have them in there. You can watch them first and then make this fan. Now by the way I did make in my original video I made the fan model available on my Patreon but I'll also make this animated version of the fan available on my Patreon as well. So you guys can also check that out in the description below. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, you can also check that out on the in, um, Instagram in the description below. So I hope you guys find this little tutorial useful and um, yeah, make something really cool of it. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do is just organize our scene. So remember in the tutorial earlier, we set up the little scene here of the lights and stuff. So I'm just gonna select holding and shift. I'm selecting all of the lights here quickly. And I'm also going to still holding and shift select the backdrop here and also the camera. So I just got these items here selected. We're just going to hit the M key on our keyboard. We're going to hit a new collection and let's just call this a light. Okay, and we're going to hit OK. We're now going to see over here in our scene collections, we now have a new um, collection. Let's just untick this. So it's not deleting it, it's just simply hiding it. So we're going to untick the lights here. And that's just going to give us our clean scene here. And also in the earlier tutorials, which you in the description below, you can see we also put all the empties on their own um, collection. So if you haven't done that, just go ahead and just hide them or put them in that same lights collection. It doesn't really matter. Just so we have just the fan here in our scene. It's just gonna really make things easier for us. So the first thing we have to do is apply the modifiers in a separate parts so we can um, join them together. So we're gonna select the fan housing, this one right here. We're gonna click on a modifiers tab and we're gonna apply the mirror modifier. And we're then gonna come and drop down the subdivision surface modifier and I'm gonna just bump down the viewport display to one and then hit apply. So with that done, I'm just gonna hit H with this selected and that's not gonna delete it, it's just hiding it. We're then gonna select the grid here at the front and we're gonna come here to the subdivision surface modifier, just apply that and then apply the mirror modifier as well. And with this guy selected, we're gonna hit H to hide him as well. And let's do the same thing with this spokes over here. Let's just apply that array. Let's give that subdivision surface modifier and apply and also the mirror, you can go ahead and apply. Hit H to hide that. And now we're gonna select this guy here and let's just apply the mirror. And let's apply the subdivision surface modifier. And let's hit H on that as well. Now we're left here with the fan blades. So let's hit B, click here and box select the fan blades here along with this nub over here in the middle. In fact, I think I didn't apply the, okay, so first of all, actually select the fan, I forgot. We actually do need to apply this. So just apply the array modifier on this and also the subdivision surface modifier. Go ahead and apply it. With that done, holding in shift, you're gonna select this um, thing in the middle, whatever you wanna call that, and then you're gonna hit Control J and that's gonna join it. So this is now one object. So if I hit R, you can see I rotate that. All right. And because we um, selected this thing here in the middle and joined these blades to it, we can see that little orange dot there. That's our origin point. So if I hit R to rotate in my front orthographic view, you can see it's all rotating around that. Now that's very important as we do need that when we're gonna be doing our animation. So let's go ahead now and go Alt H to unhide all of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this grid at the front, holding and shift, select the spokes. So now these are selected. And then holding and shift, we're gonna select the housing. So now all of these are selected. And then still holding and shift, we're gonna select this nubs at the side here. So these should all be selected and these things here should be selected last. Hit Control J and now all of this is gonna be joined to these. And we should see that the origin point for this is right in the middle here as well. And if it's not, what you can do is tab into edit mode, select a vertex here, holding in shift, select the vertex here on the other side. So it's precisely in the middle here from the right orthographic view. And then we're gonna go uh, hit F3. Oh, sorry, we're gonna go shift S. And we're gonna go cursor to selected. Oops, sorry, shift S and go cursor to selected. There we go. So now the cursor is placed precisely in the middle here. And if we just hit F3 now and we go um, or, um, origin point. So just type in origin, um, set origin. So type in set origin and then go origin to 3D cursor. So you have to do that in 
object mode to F3, type in set origin, and then origin to 3D cursor. So that's just in case your origin point isn't in the middle. And the reason I'm doing this is just simply when we do animate this and it rotates, it's got a perfect um, balance point to rotate around. So if your origin point was here at the front somewhere or back here, you would have issues. That's just why I'm taking the time to just explain that. I don't want anybody getting stuck on that. So that's why I went for that. So we now have this guy here. Origin point is in the right place. We have this fan here. Origin point is in the right place. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this fan in here, the blades. Holding in shift, we're going to select the housing here. And then we're going to go control P and we're going to go object keep transform. So now if we grab this housing, we can see that the fan is going along with it. It's now a child of this. It has a parent relationship. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this bottom thing here. Quickly go into edit mode. Select the vertex on the top part here, hit L. That simply selects any loose geometry. Hit P and we're gonna hit separate. That's gonna separate it into its own object. So if we go into object mode, this is now its own object. So let's grab this guy here. Let's quickly give it a subdivision surface modifier and hit apply. And if this guy's selected, we're gonna hold in shift, select this base plate here, control J and now it's joined. So now this is one object. And the origin point, because it's modeled from a cylinder, it should be perfectly in the center. We're only gonna be rotating this one on the Z. So if we hit R and Z, you can see that rotates perfectly on its local origin point there. So what we're gonna do now is select the housing here. Holding in shift, we're gonna select the plate here, the base plate here, and we're gonna go control P again, object, keep transform. So now the fan is a child of the housing here, and the housing is a child of this guy at the base here. So now we can rotate this guy and we can rotate this guy like that and we can individually rotate this guy in here. So it all has a constraint. So with that done, let's get into the animation and this is super easy, so don't worry at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this up a little bit and we're gonna come to frame one and also wanna come to our end frame value and make it 120 frames. We don't, we don't need anything more than that. So what we're gonna animate first is our fan. So select the fan blade, and we wanna make sure we're on frame one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit N to open up our properties panel, so N. We're gonna to come to our items, and we're gonna see here are our rotation vector. So for now, what we need to do is just quickly go Control A, and we wanna make sure to apply the rotation. Because earlier in the first videos when we were modeling this, we did rotate it in object mode, and that did things here with our rotation, so we wanna just um, apply that so all these vectors are set back to zero so we don't mess anything up in our animation. So what we're gonna do on frame one with these vectors applied, we're gonna hover over here and we're gonna hit I. That's gonna insert rotation keyframes for all of these vectors. And then what we're gonna do is come to frame 120. And on frame 120, we're gonna come to the Y rotation vector here and we're gonna type in 1500. And then hovering over it, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe. So this thing is gonna turn, this fan blade here is gonna turn 1,500 degrees on its local Y, as you can see here, between that time. But at the moment we have an issue, um, because of the animation curve, it's Bezier by default, it's gonna ease in and ease out. We don't want that. So we're gonna select both of these keyframes here. So they're both now active. And hovering over here, hit the T key on your keyboard and make it linear. We need this to be a linear animation. We don't want any sort of um, easing in and easing out. So you can see that's just one linear animation like that. So with that done, let's do the next part super simple as well. Let's just select this guy here, the base plate. And what we wanna do is come to frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna come here to the Z value and type in 22 and hit enter. Hovering over it, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe and that's on frame one. Then simply we're gonna select this keyframe, shift D to duplicate it and drag it to frame 120. We're then gonna to come to frame 60, which is precisely in the middle. Come to the Z value up here and type in minus 22 and hit enter. And then hit I to insert a keyframe. So it's gonna be negative, it's gonna be 22 degrees on the Z. It's gonna come over to negative 22 and then back to 22. So if we quickly play this, we're gonna see this is what we have. And we can see this one has the Bezier curve on it, which is not an issue. We do want it to ease in and out. In fact, just make sure. So just select these keyframes for this base plate here. Hit T and make sure it's the Bezier one here. So we want that to move, kind of stop quickly, and then come back 
quickly and then slow down. So you can see it's slowing down as it comes to um, a complete rotation and then it's speeding up again. And that's kind of like what we see in real life with a fan. Now, that being said, you can also grab this housing here and you could go R and, and double tap Y sorry, R and double tap X, and that'll rotate it on this local X. And you can add in keyframes for that rotation as well. If you do, I did try that in my earlier test, but it just didn't make a whole lot of sense for a fan this small. So you guys can do it if you want, but I'm just gonna leave the animation at this with just the turning like this and the fan blade turning. Now you could make this fan blade faster by coming to 120 and upping this rotation value so make it 3000, but I like a bit of a slower fan, so I went with that. So let's go and click on our lights here and that'll bring everything back into our scene. So here you can see we have our animation and I already covered the materials and the lighting and stuff in the previous videos if you haven't seen those. So I'm not gonna like show you how to um, like do all the materials in the final render or anything because I've already done that. So you, um, you can go ahead and render this out as an animation if you want. I'll see you guys next time. And once again, I will be making this animated version available on my Patreon as well.